Hello, and welcome to a very special Foundry Virtual Tabletop development video update. It's been an incredible year and a half for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. For those of you who aren't aware, Foundry VTT is a self-hosted and developer-friendly tabletop role-playing platform built using modern web technologies with an open and powerful API. The project began in August 2018, and since then, the last year and a half has been a whirlwind of awesome progress. I'm amazed that over that period, 2,500 dedicated and enthusiastic tabletop gamers have contributed support to help test the software, many of whom are today using Foundry VTT week in and week out for their campaigns and game sessions. The Foundry Virtual Tabletop ecosystem now boasts support for 10 game systems as well as over 100 add-on modules published or under active development with more added each month by our wonderful and awesome community of developers. The productivity of that dev community is a real testament to the potential of the Foundry approach and it's something that I'm extremely proud of. I think it's really an outstanding result for beta software and the way the community has embraced the technology to improve and extend the core software really outstrips what I'd expected by this stage of the project, and it gives me tremendous optimism about all the awesome content that will continue to be created after the software release. So, about that release. One consequence of this incredible level of support has been some reconsideration of the priorities and scope of features that I felt were critical to have for the initial release version. I'd like to thank everyone whose feedback has gone into that, and for your patience with delays beyond my originally anticipated timeline of Q4 2019. I am thrilled to now be able to announce that Foundry Virtual Tabletop has an official release date of Friday, May 22nd. Software licenses will be sold as a one-time purchase for $50 USD, with a single-use discount available for Patreon supporters based on the length and extent of support during the pre-launch period. Starting Friday, April 17th, you will be able to pre-purchase Foundry Virtual Tabletop from the official website, foundryvtt.com. All pre-purchases will receive immediate access to the software for the final month of beta testing. Be sure to check out the website for more details about the release announcement, pricing, and other frequently asked questions. In addition to the exciting news about the software's release date, I'd like to briefly cover a couple of the cool new features that have been added in recent software updates. Please note that as release approaches, the pace of major feature enhancements is slowing somewhat in favor of a focus on bug fixes, stability, documentation, and tutorials, but there are still a lot of new features added each version. I'll highlight a couple of them now. Version 0.5 introduced a major revamp of the dynamic lighting and fog of war systems which improved performance as well as the capabilities of ambient or token emitted light sources. Every light source now has improved controls for light color and intensity with a more subtle rendering style which casts a natural hue onto the nearby scene. The entire scene can automatically be filtered to apply a day-night cycle without changing the map image, and individual light sources can be configured to activate once the darkness level in the scene surpasses some threshold. You can notice how the city lights in this map came on at staggered intervals creating a cool and immersive transition for your players. Tokens can now also emit colored light, allowing for cool effects which differentiate a magical illumination spell from the light cast by a mundane lantern. All of the light source emissions can create really memorable effects as tokens which enter into their affected area become tinted by the color of the illumination. Another major addition to the software is the macro system, which allows you to pre-program commands to execute with a single button click. The macro hotbar at the bottom of the UI can be populated with macro buttons that are stored in the macros directory and can be shared across multiple users and worlds. Players can be given permission to use predefined macros which will appear in their own macro directory. For simple use cases, macros can be used to store chat commands like messages, emotes, or dice rolls that are posted to the chat log. This provides an alternative for simple systems or homebrew rule sets to easily define their own typically used dice rolls. Macros can create rolls directly using the dice rolling syntax, or you can create chat messages which embed inline rolls. The more advanced power of the macro system in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, however, 
is that macros have access to the entire JavaScript API that modules and systems use so that you can create incredibly sophisticated automation workflows to suit your exact gameplay needs. Using script macros requires a special permission that the Game Master for the World needs to enable, but each user's usage of that macro system is restricted to the API capabilities of their user role. Most game systems support drag-and-drop macro creation to the hotbar. Here, in the D&D 5e system, I can populate my character's hotbar with the most commonly used spells, abilities, and weapon attacks that I'll need during gameplay. Clicking the macro in the hotbar, or using the corresponding number key, will play that ability into chat. To give you a sense for the power of the system, some cool examples of script macros include automating a commonly used wild shape transformation for your druid party member to quickly transform into or out of a beast form, to automate the configuration of different token vision or light emission settings when moving between different areas of the world, or to trigger events like an audio cue or a day-night transition within your actively viewed scene. The last new feature I'll highlight in this video involves improvements to the dice rolling system to support new, powerful syntactic options for dice pools, nested expressions, and inline rolls. Dice pools allow you to define a collection of different dice formulae and obtain a final result for the pool based on the contained parts. For example, if you're playing Savage Worlds, a game system which is now supported in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, a dice pool would be used to incorporate a wild die that could produce a better result than your normal trait roll. Nested expressions allow you to recursively evaluate portions of a roll formula. There are many uses for nested expressions, but a good example is in the Shadowrun system, which is also now supported in Foundry VTT, where a typical test would involve rolling a variable number of d6 based on your skill and stat ranks. In this example, the nested expression allows you to first evaluate how many dice to roll, and then substitute that result to perform the roll formula. Lastly, inline dice rolls allow you to embed a rolled result or a placeholder formula directly into text content like chat messages, journal entries, roll table descriptions, or item descriptions. There are two types of inline rolls, those which are immediately evaluated and those which are deferred. An immediately evaluated role will perform the role right away and show its result in the text content, while a deferred inline role will instead display the formula as a button in the content which can later be rolled one or many times. I'd like to end with some reflection. The early months of 2020 have been a difficult time for all of us. I hope that those of you who have watched this video will forgive me for my pride and celebration of these accomplishments during a time when many people are struggling with the realities of our current health crisis. I hope that Foundry Virtual Tabletop can be a tool that helps bring us together as friends and communities to help us share the joy of tabletop gaming during a time when we otherwise need to remain apart. Please love and care for one another and join together to welcome and support all the gamers who are transitioning to online role-playing. It's been heartwarming to see the Foundry community rise to the challenge to help newcomers migrate their games into a new online medium, and I'm grateful to everyone who's contributed their time to answer questions, to share advice, and to troubleshoot issues. We're in this together, so stay happy, stay healthy, and keep the dice rolling.